Okay, we're going to work through a combustion analysis problem. This really is nothing more than a, a stoichiometry and an empirical formula problem. You just have to keep track of what it is that you're trying to find. Typically, a combustion analysis problem has some kind of a fuel, either a hydrocarbon or a compound that contains carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, or carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, but it's some kind of fuel that will burn in the presence of oxygen. And when it is burned, you then can take the products and do an analysis and work back to the known chemical formula. Typically, the setup for a combustion analysis, again, your compound is placed into a burner. Oxygen is pumped in, and the compound is burned completely. And as it is burned, it creates water in one chamber and an absorber in this chamber absorbs all of the water and you're able to find the mass of that water and work back to find the amount of hydrogen in that compound. You then have another chamber that collects all of the carbon dioxide and you're able to determine all of the carbon that's in that carbon dioxide. And all of the carbon and all of the hydrogen that end up in the CO2 and water originally came from the fuel. You can use that information to find the empirical formula. So here's a typical problem. Let's look at the data and figure out what we need to use. We've got 0 0.1156 grams of this compound. We know that the compound contains carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen. As it undergoes combustion, it is found to produce 0 0.1638 grams of carbon dioxide and 0 0.1676 grams of water. And now we want to determine the empirical formula for this compound that contains carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen. And there's no way to write a balanced equation. You can think about what's going on. You've got your unknown compound containing some number of subscript of these elements reacting with oxygen to make CO2 and water. It also has to make some kind of nitrogen oxide compound, but there are so many of those, we will find the missing nitrogen in another method. So the first thing you want to do is take the fact that you've got 0.16 38 grams of carbon dioxide. And then use the conversion factor that you know. The molar mass of carbon dioxide is 44 grams. So in 44 grams of carbon dioxide, there are 12 grams of carbon. Again, looking at the formula CO2, from the 44 grams, 12 grams comes from the carbon. That gives you 0 0.04470 grams of carbon that was in the original compound. It was converted to CO2, and then as you do the analysis, you get that mass of carbon. If you take that mass of carbon and divide it by the original 0 0.1156 grams of the sample, the compound, and multiply it by 100, you now know that your unknown compound contains 38.67% carbon. So we're going to use that in from the empirical formula. So let's continue on. We know that we have 38.67% carbon, so we'll hold on to that. Now we need to find the other element that we can determine, and that would be the hydrogen. So from the 0 0.1676 grams of water, we know that in 18 grams of water, there are 2 grams of hydrogen. And again, not H2 but the element H. Whenever you're doing these empirical formulas, you're looking at the element, not the compound. Again, out of 18 grams of water, 2 grams is hydrogen. 
That gives us 0 0.0875 grams of hydrogen over the original mass of the compound, the 0 0.1156 grams, multiplying by 100, gives us a percent of hydrogen in the compound at 16.22% hydrogen. So we now know the percent carbon and the percent hydrogen that are in our unknown compound. So continuing on with the information that we have, we're going to take the known percent of carbon and the known percent of hydrogen and we're going to find the missing percent of nitrogen. So if we look, we've got 100% of the total compound minus the 38.67% that is carbon plus the 16.22% that is hydrogen. So subtracting this, we get the percent of nitrogen, and again, that's the element nitrogen. The percent of nitrogen, once we do our subtraction, is 45.11% nitrogen. So now we have the percent of all three elements that are in the unknown compound. We are going to assume that we have a 100 gram sample of our unknown compound. We're going to take our 38.67 grams uh, be in this sample, carbon. We would also have 16.22 grams of hydrogen and 45.11 grams of nitrogen. Taking each of these and dividing by the molar mass to convert to moles, so dividing by 12 grams for carbon, 1 gram for hydrogen, and 14 grams for nitrogen would give us the moles for each of these elements. So that's going to be 3.220 moles of carbon, 16.09 moles of hydrogen and 3.219 moles of nitrogen. At this point you go through and divide by the smallest value. So just like any empirical formula, your 3.219 3.219, 3.219 gives you a 1 to 5 to 1 ratio. And if you've kept track, you know that that's 1 carbon, 5 hydrogens, and 1 nitrogen. So this is the empirical formula of your unknown compound using combustion analysis. Again, the pattern for these problems is always the same. You will find the uh, percents of the elements from the data. You will then find the missing element by using subtraction. You will then use a typical empirical formula calculation which turns your grams into moles and then you divide by the smallest value and you get your empirical formula.